for Senator Bolton. Thank you, Senator. It's just like old times where we get to ask a little question and answer. Um, I want to take a look at, at one section that, that I don't think uh, many of at least my colleagues uh, on this side of the aisle saw coming. Division 33. You, you mentioned this briefly in your remarks, but it's the electric transmission lines. W what is the purpose behind this? Okay. Um, you know, there's several different ways you can, you can do extension of utilities. One of the ways that has been used uh, is if you own the line running to area X and now you're going to go to Y, you're the company that gets to do it, period. Nobody else gets to bid on it. You have, you have priority. Another way to do it is to just put it out for uh, open bids, take the low bid, that's it. A couple of problems with both of those ways. The first way, sometimes you don't get the best price. The second way, sometimes you have uh, an out of area company come in and build it, they get paid, but they're not the ones that's going to be there to maintain it and make sure that it, it's solid and continuing. So y there's a trade off there. With this situation, it's a first right of refusal. So if I own the line going to point X and they're bidding out to Y, it's open for bids. If I happen to be the low bid, I get it. If somebody else happens to be the low bid and I have a first right of refusal, then I can say I will do it for that price and I'll extend it out. And that's what the first right of refusal does. I just didn't want to get in the weeds for somebody that didn't care. So. Thank you for the question. Well, th thank you, Senator. And I just want to follow up with that a little bit. So how, how frequently does, does that happen, that, that you would have a, a right of first refusal under this legislation pop up? Well, last year or a couple of years ago, uh, we had a situation out in western Iowa where the utility wanted to go to two different towns, and they wanted to share the cost of that extension. And so, um, that was a, that would be a type of situation that happens. Um, you know, we've got one power company that used to own all of their transmission lines, and now they don't. Uh, so another company builds and maintains the transmission lines. So uh, it it can happen. We have a lot of RECs in the state of Iowa. I think 400 RECs, separate uh, electric companies. So this can happen quite often. And w was there a, uh, and, and maybe I missed this, was there a, a bill with a subcommittee process? Because it, it feels like we're, we're, we're kind of technical in our discussion here, and I, I want to make sure that members of the public and, and, and interested uh, players in this system were able to get a question and answer like this and have a discussion so we all understood the risks and advantages of doing something like this as a public policy change. W was there a... Was there a bill that had a, a, a subcommittee process or, or any vetting of this outside of our discussion yeah, here? Yes, we already passed it already earlier this year, or last year. We passed it last year, okay. and it went over to the House. Okay. And were there any opposition or, or concerns raised in that process that we should be aware of? We discussed them all, I mean, at that time. Um, I don't remember what the final vote was, but okay. I can look that up. Well, right. I don't know right now, but. Sure. 